Hey, I'm Stephanie. This is my sewing room and today I'm going to show you how to cover a cushion in an easy way. Uh, it does require some sewing, but it doesn't require much skill. So I want to show you this is what I have in my new pop-up, new to me, pop-up tent trailer that I'm redecorating. Uh, so please do subscribe to my YouTube channel and my blog, feralfocus.com, if you want to watch me go through my remodel, which is going to be super fun. This is the covered, this is the old, and it just, it's ugly, I'm sorry, dated, nothing cute about it. I've seen some amazing remodels on these pop-up tent trailers, and that's what prompted me to want to get my own, and I got a real fixer-upper, so it does need some work, and this is just the first of many different uh, tasks that I'm going to do. So this is my covered cushion. I think it turned out pretty great. Uh, it didn't take me very long. It's super simple, and I think it looks really good. One of the things I really wanted to do, I, I'm not a perfectionist. I didn't want to be perfect. I didn't want to have to work that hard. I also didn't want to have to pay somebody else to do this, uh, because that's the whole point of this was to get a fixer-upper and not spend a lot of money. This fabric came from Walmart. It was very inexpensive. Um, if you go to my blog, I I'll be letting it, laying out what it costs and all the different things. The corners are what I liked. I wanted this whole thing enclosed. I didn't want to just fold it and tuck it. I wanted to actually have it finished. I'm going to show you how to do this on here. For this, you will need a sewing machine. You'll need fabric to cover this and thread, needle and thread, because you're going to do a little bit of hand sewing at the end. So here I'm starting with my cushion, and I needed a big table to work on. So I'm going to be using this table. Uh, the first one that I did, this tag got in the way, so I'm going to take that off first thing. It's got to go. We don't need that getting in our way, so let's throw that away. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my fabric. I'm going to make this super simple. I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to wrap it up and get my feel for how big it needs to be right here on the cushion. Let me show you how. the size that I need. I think I have a little bit of extra cushion built in just in case I need it, but uh, I always like to leave myself a little bit of room to work. So I'm just going to cut this piece off and start working on it. Ready? notice that I have it inside out? That's on purpose because this is where I'm going to actually tell myself where my seams are going to go. I'm going to sew two main seams right now and they're going to be on the sides. That's probably different than you were expecting. You probably thought I was going to sew this up and stuff it in the long ways, but I have an, a reason for that. So follow along. Uh, I'm leaving this open and I'm going to sew right here and right here. And how I'm going to do that <clears throat> So I'm going to take this end and I'm going to try and hold it right in the middle. I'm eyeballing this. This is not an exact science. So right about there. And I'm going to get a pen, just any straight pen, and I'm just going to mark it right there. And I'm going to mark it right here. Try not to catch the fabric of the actual cushion because you're going to want to pull this off in just a minute. And I'm going to pin right here. What I have now is I've pinned the ends, this side's open, and I'm going to take it off. Ruler, pen. I'm just going to mark it. It'll be easier for me to see where it is than try to sew around these pens. So pretty much just a straight line right here. Again, not a fine science. Now I might want to hold it down when I'm sewing, so I want my pins to go this way instead of this way. It's just much easier for me to pull them out when I'm sewing if they're facing perpendicular to the line. Time to sew.
little too much fabric on this end, so it's gone. This side still got a little bit too much as well. How does it fit? If it's just a little bit too loose, go back and just make one of those seams a little bit closer. Just do a little, because if you do a lot, then it's harder to undo. It's easier to just do it again. So just make a sm small little extra line until you get it just nice and snug. This is perfect. I'm happy with this. Now I'm gonna do the corners. So to see how I have this, that's just terrible. It's gonna stick up. So I'm gonna take this seam, I'm gonna lay it flat, and I'm gonna pin it right here. Now I want to make sure that I know where to start my sewing. So I'm gonna mark it at the very, very tip there. Might make it in a little bit there. And then right here on this side, I'm gonna mark it again. See that? Now I'm gonna make a, a line right there. Oopsie, I almost knocked it out. So let's do the same thing on this side. and I'm going to call that the bottom every time. So now I'm always going to put this in first. This is the top, this is the bottom, so that I know where my, this is going to be a messier seam, not a lot, but a messier seam than no seam. So I'm going to make sure that I know which one. Is you could trim this if you want. I'm going to leave it. It just add a little bit more strength. Okay, so now we're going to want to do that on these corners. We've got to turn it back the other way. So what I'm going to need to make this corner is I'm going to need a little bit of a seam. But because this has an actual piece of wood, I can't make my seam too far in. It's not like I can stuff a cushion in there. I can't stuff very much. This piece of wood ends right here, so I can push that, but beyond that, I can't. So I'm gonna make my seam start right about here, and the rest I'm gonna leave open so I can get the cushion back in there. So I'm just gonna fold this up. Let me turn it so you can see. I'm trying to decide where this seam is gonna be. I want it about halfway, so I'm just gonna find that halfway spot right about there. I want it to be firm, but not so tight that I can't sew it. Mark it. Mark it right here. Nice and tight. Not too tight, just nice and tight. Right here. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll figure it out. Get it off. And that is easier said than done. So I don't want to pull these pins out. I might want to move this one up a little. It's a little bit too far down. And off she goes. Take care on this. here, what we're going to need to do is get it on the cushion inside out so that we can make one of these. Remember that where we sewed it across there? So we need to get this back on here. Now remember where my bottom is. My bottom is where the zipper is. There it is. I, I am not going to put this whole cushion on here to get this corner. I'm just going to do this corner right here right now. I'm going to pin it just like I did the other one folding over the seam and holding it tight and make a little mark so I know where to sew. And then uh, I'm gonna mark it right here on the end and right here on this end so I know right where I wanna sew. 
And now I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to do the other side, just the same. Let's see what we've got. And this time we're going to go right side out. There's my corner. There's my other corner. Corner. And corner. So fast. That's my top. That's my zipper, so that's my bottom. It probably wouldn't matter because my bottom and my top are the same size, but some of them kind of go out at an angle. So it'd be even more important if you have that to be careful. You gotta be careful at this point because you might just rip this seam right open. It's got to go over this. I'm just gonna be pushing this down, but I've got a board right here of wood, so I can only push it so far. So I've just gotta be careful. I have a lot to learn about making these videos. My video quit on me, and so what I have done since it stopped is I've turned it right side out, put it on, fixed my corners, and now I'm ready to sew up the opening. So what I'm doing, if you can kind of see right here, is I'm creating an edge for my seam. This is gonna be my seam, and I'm gonna do that with a needle and thread. And what I wanna say about that is it sounds hard and it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't hard. It is so easy. And if you can use a needle and thread, there are so many things you can do. And oh my gosh, I have saved the day many times with my being able to just sew things with a needle and thread. In fact, you could make this whole cushion with needle and thread and no sewing machine. It would take a little bit longer, but not as long as you think. And you get really good at it the more you do it. So I am gonna sew this opening up with a needle and thread and uh, if I did not have this piece of wood, there's a piece of wood here holding this and making it stiff because it goes in my trailer, my pop-up tent trailer, uh, I would probably make my opening a lot smaller, like maybe a third on each side and just stuff that, stuff that cushion in. Uh, but I can't bend this cushion at all because it's wood. So I have to leave this pretty much whole thing open and sew it. But it's, it's so not a big deal. I'm gonna show you. Now we've been timing and up to this point, we're at 39 minutes. Okay, so 39 minutes and I'm going to start again. Okay, let's see how long it takes to sew by hand. Uh, I want to tell you that I'm using this kind of needle. This is a craft needle. It's very, very thick and very sturdy. And so what that means is, I lost my thread. Here it is. It won't bend. It will. It won't. It, it'll be easier to work with, and um, so on. Now I'm not going to use too much thread at a time because it will get all knotted. It's easier just to stop and re-thread again when you need some more. So don't think that you're going to use one piece of thread for this whole piece. It'll probably take maybe three different times you're going to re-thread. Not a big deal, especially not with this needle. It's super huge opening. You don't even have to really look and I have terrible vision. Hence why I wear the glasses. Okay, so I'm going to make a knot on the end and on normal fabric one little knot would do it but this is not normal fabric. This is indoor outdoor fabric. So the weave of it is just a little bit looser, more open. So it needs a bigger knot. That's all. When in doubt make a bigger knot. One more for good measure. Okay, so there we go. I've got a bigger knot. Now, I'm gonna start on this end and I'm gonna start inside. So I'm gonna start inside so that my knot is inside. You can't always do that, but if you can, do it. It's kind of nicer not to see it. So I'm starting on the inside. 
my knots in there and it still might pull through because this is fabric is you know it's just not as tight as some fabrics so what I'm going to do to sort of do a little prevention I'm not going to pull too hard right now I'm going to sew a couple of times and I'll show you that close up in a little bit more and now I'm going to tie an extra knot I actually probably have too much thread right now and it's kind of hard to work with wants to knot up on me. So if it's knotting up on you, you have too much. See, it's trying to make a knot and I hate that. Such a waste of time. Okay, so I'm going to tie a couple more knots before I continue so that I know it's not going anywhere. All right, we're being timed. Are you ready? Here we go. Hold this down low so your arms aren't way up in the air. Now I'm just going to take this two edges. See the edges right here? Wow, I don't need a pin right there. I'm going to take those two edges and I'm just going to pinch them together. And that's where my seam is going to be. And then I'm just going to sew. And how that's working is I'm holding these two pieces of fabric together. One here, one here. And I'm taking my needle and I'm simply passing it through both pieces of fabric. That's it. And pull. Now it can get a little loose right here, so just give it a little tug every once in a while. I still have some ends there, but this is the bottom. It's not even going to show. So I'm not going to worry about being perfect. Every stitch is not the exact same a distance apart from each other. I'm going to try and keep it as close as I can so that it's sturdy and people can sit on it and it won't come apart. But I'm not too worried about uh, being exact at this point. Again, I have too much thread there. All right, here we go. Let me tell you why these pins are here. These are just showing me where the edge of my seam is going to be so that I can pull them together. And I want to make sure that I pin it all the way down. I started pinning, but I didn't finish. And you know, I really just don't want this to get crooked towards the end there. And honestly, the end is where it gets tricky anyways. So what I want to do is see where does my other seam come together. It comes together right there. See it? So I want that to match up. <coughs> so I'm going to pin my fabric right there. That's where my seam edge is going to be. And that's where the other side is going to be. It's not an exact science. If you want perfection, this is not the place for you. If you want quick and easy and it will be fine, this is the place. I'm just going to make this so simple and fast that I don't have to spend a lot of time on it. <coughs> So here we go, back to sewing, back to the needle and thread. You always want to keep this tail out. If it gets stuck up in there, you're never getting it out. So you want to keep pulling. Uh, when, it, when it gets close and it's in here, just pull it out. That's what happened just then. I pull it out and make sure that you don't have it way up here either because then it'll just come out of your needle. So keep it loose. Right about there. Now that I'm getting close to my end, not super close, I want to see if my edges are matching up. And I feel like this side is a little looser. I might be pulling this side a little tighter. So now I'm going to try and get this evened up a little before I get to the end. But don't worry, if it gets wonky at the end, I'll show you how to fix that. It's not hard.
almost to the end. This is where it gets a little tricky. You definitely want these to line up so that there's not uh, a little bit of puckering or wonkiness going on. But if you do get puckering and it does get wonky, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. All right, here we go. We're in the home stretch. I'm definitely gonna have some puckering here. These do not match up, but I'm not worried. puckery right there. Now this is going to be on the bottom so I could just leave it like that but it's so easy to fix if you just kind of start sewing backwards and you just kind of sew right where the pucker is you'll pull it down. Well I shouldn't have gone that far. Hold on. So I just want to do one more right here. All right, let's see if I have enough for a knot. That's one. I'm holding it really tight on this end because there's hardly any tail here. That tail can fall right out. So I'm pinching it on the end just so my tail will stay. That's a little tip for you. Two. Three, let's make one more stitch. We'll do this lock it in here really good. One more. All right, let's see if we've got enough to make another knot. Almost out. Here we go. One. Two. Three. I could probably do one more. I could probably do three or four more. That's enough. Okay, so let's trim that. It's still a little puckery, but not too bad. I'm not worried about it. If, if it was the top, I probably would take it out and do it over. But it's not the top. It's the bottom. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. So here we have it. Our cushion is done. And it looks like new. which is perfect, there's no seam up here. I'm very happy with how my cushions turned out. I love that they are finished on the ends. They have the corners and uh, yes, we did hand sewing from here to here, but I timed it and it was 27 minutes. So 27 minutes to sew this much by needle and thread. And then you add to that the, 30, um, the 32 minutes that it took it was 39 minutes that took to sew up to that point. So 39 plus 27 is just a little more than an hour to go into covering this whole thing. And I feel like that was an hour well spent for me. I'm super happy with the results. I love this cushion. It's my color. It's what I like. Um, I'm very happy with how it turned out. This is my first sewing video, but I'm going to make more. I have the other cushions. This is the back. I have the bottom. I'll be doing those a little bit differently because they don't have the wood in them but they do have a little bit of different things that I need to do. So I'm going to show that to you. If you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and follow my channel and see what comes up next because you never know. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or if I totally confused you, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll be happy to explain anything that I can. Um, so I look, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.